Welcome back, Sagex. Today we are going to dive into how you can leverage Docker to run JupyterLab. So let's get started. Last time we saw how you can leverage Docker to run any image, and today we are going to put this into practice to deploy a JupyterLab instance. Why is that? Because Right, if you want to play with JupyterLab if you have any kind of Python workflow for your data analysis, and in particular, you want also to have inside that probably all the data science tools that are more uh, widely uh, adopted right now. So uh, for example, Pandas, NumPy, and so on and so forth. Why we are doing this into Docker? You can in principle install this also in your environment, in your operating system. Yet yeah, there are two main reasons for that. The, the first one is portability. So you see here uh, on the one of the first episodes, we talk on this for cloud native tools. So you will be able, using Docker, to port your environment into any service provided by uh, cloud uh, resources. And this is really a huge value nowadays because many institutions are also moving to providing users with an interface that is in this kind of environments. So if you have set up your JupyterLab with all your software, you can go there and say, hey, this is my container, I can run wherever you want. The second motivation is that you can share your environment with other people. You can say, hey, just download my image from Docker Hub and that's all. Pretty awesome, right? So now let's see how we can use JupyterLab to instantiate uh, something like an interactive uh, notebook to play with pandas and other libraries. All right, basically you go to Docker Hub and you search for uh, well, simply Jupyter uh, and JupyterLab will be enough, so you will be prompt with a lot of images. The first one is, guess what, SciPy Notebook. So it's just what we are going to need, that is, as you see, a scientific notebook with all the Python stack. You have also all other stuff in here, but we are going for the first one. So after that, we are going to look for a, a good tag. Uh, tag is the version of the image that you want to use. And we see here that we are in the latest version, we have Python 3.10. That, let's suppose, it's the exact version that you need. You have also a link in the documentation where you can see, uh, typically, all the good software is providing uh, good documentation in the Docker Hub page. And you see here, there is the instantiation instruction, so you can just copy and paste with the tag that you decided and get started basically. So we are going to write down Python 3.10, that is the version that we want, and okay, just press enter. We are going to download uh, all the images, it will take a, a bit, and but after that, we see this execution log, and with, with this link, now we can leverage a nice application that has just been released, that is JupyterLab desktop application. So this application is a standalone way to connect to any JupyterLab instance around the world. You just need a link and a valid token and you keep all the connection in memory so you can get back to whatever instance you have, rename it and go for that. So we are going to connect directly to our notebook. And here we are. We have our environment perfectly working. We can check for instance that we have pandas uh, installed and also see the version of pandas. Now we can simply close and go to the next step that is understanding how data inside this container can be made persistent. In fact, if I stop here, I won't be able to refine data uh, on the next time I log in. So I will lose this data forever. The documentation come handy again and provide us the instruction to mount a volume in Docker. We will see in detail on a dedicated episode how to manage volume. Just 
stay with me and uh, create a folder where we are going to implement and to create our persistent storage so our all the files that are going to be put into work directory they will stay there in your local system and will be saved for next container to be run home and then we're going to mount simple like that press enter notebook starting again and we are going now to write into work directory into jupyter lab we are going also to open a new python notebook and you see here on the directory we are going to look into the directory it's appearing a new file it's bidirectional this operation so you can also write in your terminal a file in that folder and it will appear back in your application that's awesome right so there is one more thing that is you cannot only log in into JupyterLab application you can open the very same window also on your browser that is pretty awesome right so you can connect from whatever and, lo and losing no data basically now let's try to bring down our server simple like shutting down and bring it up again the only thing that we are going to see me uh, changing is the token you can keep it fixed with uh, your own password just go to the documentation it's all explained uh, but other than that as you can see here i'm going to launch it again and well that's done and inside work we have our files again so you see now you can install all your packages or create your own image next episode we are going to see how to edit this one and including new libraries and that's it so for today we are experiencing with our hands the power of docker and it's just the beginning so subscribe if you like it and stay connected